The story begins on March 5, 1990, from Bawanipur, Kolkata, where there is an apartment, a Nand apartment. It was around 5 in the evening. Yashomati Parikh, who had gone to a temple, was returning home from there. She took the lift to go into the house, as her apartment was on the third floor. When she reaches outside her house, she knocks on the door, but no one comes from inside to open it. Yashomati Parikh keeps knocking on the door again and again, but there was no response from inside. But still, she knocked loudly for two to four minutes, but still there was no response from inside. Now Yashomati started feeling very scared, so she knocked loudly. She knocks the door and makes loud noises, but no sound comes from inside. Due to the noise, people start gathering outside. Now do you know who is inside the house? Inside the house is Yashomati's 18-year-old daughter, Hital Parikh. Now gradually, people start gathering here. The door was not open, due to which people think of breaking the door and break the door. After that, Yashomati goes inside the house with the neighbors. As soon as Yashomati steps inside the house, she finds her daughter's clothes on the ground which she had worn just today. Now here, her heart beats very fast. She runs to her daughter's room, but as soon as she opened the door, her daughter was lying on the ground, blood splattered on the walls of the room, only red blood was visible everywhere. Seeing this, her mother screamed. She understood. He couldn't figure out what happened to his daughter, and from here began a mystery that whoever tried to solve started doubting his own results. This story starts with a family in which four people live, Nagaradas Parikh, Yashomati Parikh, Hetal Parikh, and Bavesh Parikh. Nagardas and Bavesh had a jewelry shop which was running a good business. Yashomati Parikh was a housewife, and her daughter Hetal Parikh was a 10th class student at Valley Gold Smith School. As I told you, Hetal was in 10th class, and her board exams were to be held in the month of March. It was the 1st of March. Early in the morning, her daughter left for her school, packed her bag, and went down with her luggage. Because they lived on the third floor, she leaves the house around 7 p.m. and comes back to her house at 1 p.m. After coming home, she tells her mother that the security guard of our society looks at me in a very dirty manner, and he also teases me often. When her mother hears this, she ignores it and tells her daughter to concentrate on her studies and ignore all these things. The next day, Hatal doesn't go to school, and on the following day, March 3rd, she attends school. Upon returning home, she informs her mother that the guard has been asking her to go for a movie in a very inappropriate manner. Initially, when the daughter first mentioned this to her mother, some action should have been taken. But this time, when the daughter brings it up again, her mother gets angry. In the evening, when Nagardas Parikh returns home, she tells him everything. Later, Nagardas Parikh files a complaint in the society, and the society forwards the complaint to the security service company. The society had initially removed him, but he later returned to work through another company. Let's find out more about this guard. The guard's name is Dhananjo Chatterjee, 25 years old, already married. He doesn't talk much with anyone in the society. Now, on March 4th, the security service company tells Don and Jay, You will go to some other apartment and give duty. Now you will not come to Anand's apartment because a complaint was made against him. Now the day of March 5th comes. The date, remember. Don and Jay was supposed to go for work in some other apartment, but he does not go there for duty. He comes back to Anand apartment. Early in the morning, Nagaradas leaves for his shop, and he also sees Don and Jay. But a strange incident happens here. We will tell you further what happened. Now, Hetal had an exam that day. Hetal also leaves her house early in the morning and has to come back by around 1.30. Now, Don and Joy's duty was from 6 o'clock in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Although he was not going to come here to do duty, Still, it was not known why he came. Don and Joy's duty was to end at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but it was already 4 o'clock in the evening. Don and Joy was still standing there, although the second shift guard had also arrived. But Don and Joy was still in this society. Don and Joy did his guard duty. He was still wearing his clothes. Don and Joy went to the room given to the guards to sit and took out his clothes from his bag and changed. Now he wore gray-colored pants and a cream-colored shirt, and he stood in the society till 5 o'clock. Now it was 5.20 here. Yashomadi Parikh goes to the temple at this time as usual. At 5.25, 
Don and Jay leaves to go to the third floor. Another guard's voice comes from behind, and he asks him where he is going. Don and Joy tells that I have to go upstairs and make a call, and I have to talk to my agency people. I have to tell them that I'm going to go to a new place for duty soon, and there is some problem. I have to talk about it. At that time, not everyone had mobile phones and very few houses had telephones, so to make a phone call, Don and Joy had to go to the third floor. Don and Joy goes to the third floor, but then within two, four minutes, a man comes down to the ground floor and asks the night shift guard whether a new guard had come here today in the morning shift. Then the other guard from the front says, No, no, today only Dananjay came on duty. Actually, this man had come from the security agency to see whether the new guard had come here or not and where Dananjay had gone for duty. But when he came to know that Dananjay came here today to do duty even though he was refused, so he is surprised. Later, he says, Don and Jay must have gone home, but the night shift guard says, No, he was here. He has gone to the third floor for some work. So here the manager gets more surprised. He says, Call him. Now the night shift guy calls loudly, calling Don and Jay in the name of Don and Jay. Come down, Don and Jay, hears the voice and says, Yes, I am coming. Within about five minutes, Don and Jay comes down. That means he went at 525 and came back at 545 waited upstairs for 20 minutes when he comes down. The agency manager asks him, why are you here? Have you come? So while talking like this, both of them start going out of the society. Don and Jay tells that I will go to the new place for duty only after a few days. After this, Don and Joy picks up his luggage and leaves. Now the time was 5.50. Now in the beginning of the video, we told you that Yashomati Parikh comes back from the temple, knocks the door, and then she sees the dead body of her daughter, Hetal Parikh. When the people come to know that such a big accident has happened here, everyone starts coming to Hetal Parikh's house. Father Nagar Das and Bavesh are also called. At home. Now slowly everyone was coming. Only the police's arrival was pending. Around 9 o'clock, the police also arrived and started their work. But at this time, quite a few people had already reached the crime scene. The police sent the body for post-mortem and collected the evidence found here. Now, under the name of evidence, they find a button from a shirt, which was a cream-colored shirt, along with two or three other normal items. On March 6th, the next day, the story begins here. Father Nagardas is asked, Do you suspect anyone? Nagardas reveals that in our society, there's a guard named Don and Jay. I'm suspicious of him because he harassed my daughter and even asked her to watch a movie. He filed a complaint against him in the society, and they transferred him to another place. Perhaps he did this disgusting act to vent his anger. Later, Maya Shimoti is also called, and she tells the same story. Just a few elements are added. The story was that Don and Joe used to harass their daughter. Yashomari says that a watch was also stolen from our house, probably yesterday, and along with it, she mentioned that the lift man saw Don and Jai Chatterjee going towards our house upstairs. Now the police summons the lift man. The lift man says, Around 5.45, I saw Don and Jay Chatterjee going downstairs, but when he must have come upstairs, maybe I was in the bathroom at that time. I didn't see him going upstairs, but Hital's mother had said that the liftman saw him going towards our house. Well, now the night shift guard is questioned, and he says that from 5.25 to 5.45, Don and Jay went upstairs, and my manager also came at that time. So the police summons that manager. Now the manager explains that Don and Jay had been transferred, but he came here for duty. When I found out, I called Don and Jay, and when he heard the call, he said, I am coming. Then he came down, and I asked why he came here for duty. He explained that he had to go to the village this evening, so I came here for duty at a new place for a day. After that, the manager explains that Don and Joy took his bag and went to watch a movie. After watching the movie, he had a train ticket for the evening, so he went to his village from there. Now, the police ask why he suddenly went to the village, and the manager tells them that there is a ritual or tradition in their family as a child was born there, and he was going to fulfill that. It's unclear how many days he stayed there. Then comes the post-mortem report. The post-mortem reveals 21 wounds on the body, and there has been sexual intercourse. Remember this term carefully. It is mentioned that he was strangled. Subsequently, on May 12, 1990, approximately two months later, 
the police go to Dhananjai Chatterjee's village and arrest him. Along with him, the police find clothes that he wore on March 5th and a watch that matches with it. Now let's find out what happened according to the police on March 5th. According to them, Yashomati goes to Yashomati Park at 5.20 and Danjay goes to the temple at 5.25. On the third floor, there was no lift man through the elevator. He had gone to the bathroom. When Danjay goes afterward, perhaps the door in Hetal's room would be open, because if the door wasn't open, why would Hetal open the door upon seeing Danjay? After that, he goes inside, commits r first, then strangles her, and later attacks with a knife. Now he comes out of the house. After that, when his manager came, he scolded him from below. Donanjay, standing there, had said, I'll be there in a hurry, Then he must have come down. After that, at 5.50, Yashomati Parek would have returned, meaning Donanjay had 20 minutes in total. But between all this, there are puzzles that you'll find out now. So far, everyone who knew the story was against Donanjay, and all evidence was pointing against him. You also consider Don and Joy the murderer. Absolutely correct. Keeping all these things in mind, the case against Don and Joy begins. See, it is shown here that Don and Jay had a motive to kill Hetal, and he found the button of the yellow shirt from Hetal's room, which he was wearing at that time. Behind this, there is another story. Later, a watch stolen from Hetal's house was found with Don and Jay. They also tell a very big story behind it. With this, one thing I didn't tell you. On March 5th, when the police first entered Heddle's house, they found a cream-colored shirt button there, along with a chain. When the police asked, whose chain is this? Yashomati said, it's not ours, but the person who cleans here says it's mine. After that, she says that I had gifted this chain to Dananjay. Now, in front of the police, there is a chain that has fallen from Dananjay. Dananjay also picked up a watch which he had recovered and also found a button from Hetal's shirt. Because of this, Dananjai receives the death penalty for the first time here. He had three charges, murder, rape, and theft. Dananjai goes to the high court where the same sentence is maintained. After the high court, there is also a sentence in the Supreme Court. After that, a mercy petition is filed in front of the President of India, but it is rejected. In other words, now Dananjai's hanging was fixed, and it took 14 years to do all this. Now you might think, so the decision has come. Why are we sitting here? Wait a moment. Be patient. Well, on August 15, 2004, Don and Jay was supposed to be hanged, and the name of the executioner who was to hang him was not a Malik. The police officer takes Don and Jay with him. Early in the morning, Don and Joy was to be hanged. As Don and Jay was going with them, he asked the officer, Sir, when I die, will the police find the real killer, or will the case end here? The police officer had no answer to this. Tananjai asked the same question to Natamalik. Please, the real killer who did all this should be punished. Here everything happens, and Tananjai is hanged. When Tananjai's family is informed, they refuse to take his body. Later, the police themselves perform his last rites. Natamalik mentioned that when I gave the death sentence to Tananjai, for many days, he appeared in my dreams at night, kneeling at my feet, saying, Don't kill me. I haven't done anything. The impact of this entire case also affected his life, and this was his last hanging. After that, he starts selling worship items near a temple. Now everything has happened. Dananjay is no longer in this world. But the real twist in the story comes now. Pay attention to everything. At 5.20, Yashomari goes to the temple. That's fine. At 5.25, Dananjay goes upstairs. The lift man wasn't there before, and he mentioned this. Going to court, the lift man said he saw Dananjoy going upstairs. Let's assume he saw it. After that, Dananjoy goes to Hetal's house. Hetal's door was usually closed, so why was it open that day? If it wasn't open, how did Dananjay go inside? Surely Hetal must have opened the door. But when Hetal knew that Dananjay was outside because he could be seen through the door, why did she open it? While he used to harass her, and she was alone at that time. Why did she open the door? Let's assume that the door was either already open or left open, and then Don and Jay entered. All right, there Don and Jay did everything I told you. After that, how did Don and Jay come out? Because when he went from inside to outside, who closed the door from the inside? When Yashomati returned to the temple, she bolted the door because it was closed from the inside. So how did this happen? 
This is a big question. There are many questions ahead as well. Also, remember that Don and Jay stole and took the clock in 20 minutes without touching any other household items. Anyway, when Yashomadi came back at 5.50, according to her, Hital wasn't opening the door. She knocked a lot, called people around, but why didn't she try calling on the phone inside the house before pushing the door? It could also be that Hetal fell asleep, having taken an exam. Who knows if she fell asleep, but she didn't think about calling even once, just pushed the door directly. Now the question here is also why, if Don and Jay stole the watch, did he keep it with him for two months? He knew he would eventually be caught, and the only evidence he had was the watch, along with another piece of evidence, the button from the shirt that had fallen off. The forensic team never found themselves in a situation where they were sure that yes, this button belonged to Don and Jay's shirt, meaning it wasn't a solid piece of evidence. Anyway, when everyone gathered at Hatal's house at 6 o'clock, why didn't he inform the police at that time? Because when the police were informed, it was already 9 o'clock at night. At that time, the entire neighborhood was gathered in that house, and his mother was holding Hetel in her arms. Carrying Hetel in her arms, she took her to the elevator, where the doctor arrived and pronounced Hetel dead. Now, why didn't they inform the police at that time is also a big question. Now, let's turn to the story of the watch. Look at the watch that Don and Jay received from the shop, where the Parikh family had bought it. The shopkeeper then said that the watch is the same, but its serial number is not the one we sold to the Parikh family. In other words, the watch model is the same, but the watch Hedl's family bought was different because its serial number was unique. The serial number of this watch is different. Now here, another strange thing was that when this case was ongoing, Hetal's mother Yashomadi left her entire home and went to Mumbai within a week, and within six months, the whole family, whose business was doing well, also left everything and went to Mumbai. From above, their son Bavesh had 12 ethieth grade exams. He thought it right to leave him and go to Mumbai. Why, you may wonder. If Don and Jay didn't do all this, then who is the real killer? Here comes another angle. Maybe his mother killed her own daughter. Now you might think how could that be, and you might say that if there is mention of sexual intercourse in the post-mortem report, how could it have happened? So let me tell you one thing, that in the post-mortem report, there is no mention of anywhere. Most of the things that are visible might suggest that sexual intercourse could have been consensual and semen found on Hetel's body, with no DNA test conducted. Well, this is all theoretical, but now in your perspective, who do you think is the antagonist of this entire story? Ultimately, who took the life of that poor girl with so many dreams? Perhaps she didn't know what she wanted to do in life. It's possible that Don and Jay killed her, but it's also possible that an innocent person had to sleep the eternal sleep today. What's your opinion about this society's influence on it? Let me know in the comment section. Also, how did you find the video? Share your thoughts.